Oral storytelling has been around for as long as mankind. Ireland is no exception. Traditional Irish stories were originally designed for oral history, entertainment and children's stories to teach them strong morals. Men and women had specific roles within the traditional storytelling tradition. Men gravitated towards the Shkeliuk stories who are the typically more heroic, complex and dramatic in presentation, and the women more so towards the Shankus genre. These stories were shorter and more realistic tales. You know, they're the longer, more complicated stories, which could, which could include hero tales or magic tales. They were told as entertainment. Shanachus then covers the shorter forms of story, plus information about uh, the material culture, lore about weaving or thatching. Many of the traditional crafts would be included there in Shanachus. But it would also include shorter stories about the area, about the local history of the area, about supernatural phenomena, and things that would be regarded as potentially true and told as true. Whether everyone would believe them or not is open to question. With this, the role of women in storytelling was generally restricted to telling stories at home or at a friend's house. The custom, the custom was called Erkursh, which means on a visit, or Arnon, meaning night visiting. These nights would include both men and women, but the men and women would almost always go to separate houses and interact apart from one another. According to Deborah Kodish, founder of the Philadelphia Folklore Project, gender relations are constantly present as subtext. I think that women generally would, would, would be able to tell any kind of story, maybe except the very long complicated hero tales. That's the given uh, wisdom we get from folklore scholars. However, I have come across versions of long hero tales told by women, so that's not 100% true either. Women of course were much more comfortable, well seem to be much more comfortable with the shorter forms of story which fitted well into kind of work occasions or, or occasions which were, were more kind of casual and where, where shorter stories would be more comfortably told. This, in combination with the tendency that women told stories privately and the constant lack of funds set aside for collectors, are likely reasons why there isn't as much information about women in traditional Irish storytelling. However, one very well respected and widely studied storyteller was Peg Sayers. Peg was born, I think, in 1873 in uh, West Kerry, in what's known as now as the Dingle Peninsula. And uh, she came from a fairly poor background. She seemed to be able to tell almost every kind of story, including her. Well, I, I know of some short heroic stories that she told, which would normally be the preserve of men, or at least as far as what we know, would have been associated with male storytelling. But she also told long uh, magic tales, or wonder tales, and many legends. And also, as I said already, she knew loads of songs and prayers as well, and gave a lot of historical lore as well to collectors. Today, Peg is remembered as one of the most talented female Irish storytellers of all time. Though she was illiterate, she articulated her autobiography, Peg, which has been viewed as a pillar of Irish literature in schools for many years. Clodagh Brennan Harvey's research suggests that Peg was very talented and considered the queen of the Irish women storytellers. There was actually many women of equal talent. Peg Sayers was an inspiration to many Irish folklore enthusiasts, played a very important role in breaking gender barriers and spread the craft of traditional Irish storytelling around the world.